Today, I'd like to talk about some of the New World civilizations in Mesoamerica. In particular, I'll be talking about the Olmec, which you see in the center of this map, Mayan, Teotihuacan, and the Aztec. Mesoamerican civilization development is divided into three periods by archaeologists. The Preclassic or Formative period from 1500 before the Common Era to 300 Common Era, Classic from 300 to 950, and Post-Classic from 950 up until Spanish incursion 1521. The landforms in this area may be categorized as lowlands or highlands. The highlands are mountainous with highland plateaus that are flat, such as around Mexico City, and a cool to warm climate. <clears throat> the lowlands include the coastal plains as well as the Yucatan Peninsula, which is hot and humid. Here it is hilly in the south <clears throat> and flat in the north. We see limestone rock underneath creating a karst or cave forming topography, often lacking surface water. This map shows the limits of the various civilizations that I will be talking about. Note the Olmec heartland along the uh, coast, just south of Veracruz. The approximate limits of the upland high Mesoamerican culture, including Teotihuacan and the Aztec Empire. And then in green, the Mayan civilization. In this Mesoamerican timeline, you can see that Olmec was by far the earliest civilization followed by the Zapotec, which I will not be talking about, and then Teotihuacan and the Mayan, and ending with the Aztec. So what came before these civilizations? Well, Paleo-Indian groups arrived during the Pleistocene, or Ice Age, and they were egalitarian hunter-gatherer foragers and not sedentary. And according to our best information so far, they likely arrived along the west coast by boat, initially and later by walking. Later groups and cultural periods after the Paleo-Indian have regional names. But by 7,000 before the Common Era, egalitarian groups were experimenting with growing plants. And by 4,000 before the Common Era, we see the first domesticates, and especially maize. And by 2,000 before the Common Era, sedentary villages are common. Between 2000 and 1000 before the Common Era, in both the highlands and the lowlands, small chiefdoms appear, and populations began to rely on growing maize, beans, squash, amaranth, sweet potatoes, all of which were cultivated by hand. And from the earliest time, we see trade networks throughout the entire area. Many use slash and burn agriculture. In this type of agriculture, you cut out uh, small plots in the forest. You've cut down the vegetation, you let it dry, and then you burn it, and the ash helps fertilize the soil. One of the key aspects to the sustainability of slash and burn agriculture is that these are small plots. After a few years, you start a new plot somewhere else, and the forest is able to regrow in that small plot. In some places, they used irrigation canals, and in some places, they built raised fields in the swampy areas. Let's begin with the Olmec, who were in power between 1500 and 500 before the Common Era. During the early Preclassic, Olmec began as a series of chiefdoms along the Gulf Coast of Veracruz and Tabasco. These chiefdoms held some influence over adjacent areas of Chiapas and Central Mexico. They are thought to have arisen in part due to population growth. Here, along the rich coastal lands, families accumulated wealth. The Olmec heartland is only about 125 miles long and 50 miles wide along the coast. This area is a swampy coastal lowland with low hills, ridges, and to the north, volcanoes. So Olmec was a series of chiefdoms who were linked by kinship, religion, and trade. 
The Olmec chiefdom shared art motifs, religious symbols, and ritual beliefs. They all practiced agriculture and had a writing system. The Olmec depended upon meat such as dog, white-tailed deer, birds, fish, turtles, and coastal shellfish. They also raised maize, beans, squash, sunflower, manioc, and chili. They collected wild corozo palm nuts, which as you can see are quite large. One bunch of nuts can weigh 40 kilograms, <clears throat> and these are very oil-rich nuts. The tree was useful in other ways too, because you could use the leaves to thatch roofs. And the Olmec were the first to use chocolate. The earliest writing were signs representing calendrical events, but these evolved into logographs, that is, drawings representing a single idea. And you read these from top to bottom. When you look across these different civilizations, these Mesoamerican glyphs resemble each other. Look in particular at the moon and also the snake. The Olmec calendar contained 260 days, of which 20 were named days. Here you see Stella C from Tres Zapotes, which shows the second oldest recorded Olmec date in writing, September 3rd in 32 before the Common Era. Off to the left, I've written the numbers that are represented, 7, 16, 6, 16, and 18. Maybe by looking at these, you can figure out what the bars mean and what the dots mean. Four major Olmec religious centers developed, spaced from east to west. At the east, La Venta, central, San Lorenzo, a little bit further west, Laguna de los Cerros, and at the far west, Tres Zapotes. Trade was important and far-reaching for elite luxury items, and this map shows you some of the main Olmec trade routes. Elite items were made of jade, obsidian, magnetite, and serpentine. The Olmec are famous for the large stone heads carved from basalt. These may represent portraits of rulers, and they appear to be helmets for the ritual ball game. We think that the glyphs on their helmets may be their names. Rituals link the king to the sun, and the plazas and platforms were configured to mark solar equinoxes. Ball game played an important role in Olmec society and may have included sacrifices. And once again, the giant heads may be wearing ball game helmets. Ball game was played throughout Mesoamerica using a rubber ball, because of course here is where rubber trees grew. And sometimes losers were sacrificed, as indicated by the drawing on the right with the severed heads and the unhappy looking player. <laughs> a frequent Olmec motif is the jaguar, shown here on the right in a mosaic, very stylized, and on the left, that person who seems to be emerging is emerging out of the mouth of a stylized jaguar. The Olmec had a hierarchical settlement pattern with a few permanent ceremonial centers that contained earthen mounds, pyramids, ball courts, and only the priests and rulers lived here, carrying out rituals. Then there were towns, regional centers, in control of villages and small villages located throughout the countryside. Homes were built in floodplains on small mounds, or perhaps they weren't deliberately built on small mounds, but because they were rebuilt over and over in the same spot, a small mound built up underneath them, and the home was surrounded by a cleared area. San Lorenzo was the first Olmec center. This was the one located more or less in the center. It controlled the vast floodplain of Coatzacoalcos and its trade routes. 
they traded obsidian and semi-precious stones. Here, a person crouching shows you the size of these giant stone heads. This first Olmec center peaked at 1150 before the Common Era and was abandoned around 900 before the Common Era. We think about 1,000 people lived here, including the elite, artisans, and farmers. This center had temples, plazas, a royal compound where the elite lived, an aqueduct, and roads. The easternmost center, La Venta, was located in the swampy lowlands. They traded cacao, or chocolate, rubber, and salt. It rose to power after the fall of San Lorenzo in 900 before the Common Era, and it lasted about 500 years. Laguna de los Cerros, in the foothills of the Tuxtla Mountains to the north, was occupied between 1200 before the Common Era to Common Era 900. Little archeology span has been done here, but we can see from aerial photographs like this that there were nearly 100 mounds. And in particular, you can see a long rectangular mounds flanking a plaza that has conical mounds at either end. Some of these are residential mound platforms. Tres Zapotes in the Gulf Lowlands is the furthest west, occupied from 900 before the Common Era, and it continued into the post-Olmec period about Common Era 900. It's located near the volcanic basalt outcrops that were used to make these giant stone heads. It has over 160 mounds, which were mostly residential mounds, marked here in kind of a darker brown or orangish brown. Four major plazas were present by the post-Olmec period, shown here in uh, rectangles. And also there was a long rectangular mound to one side that was conical at the end. Let's move on to talking about the Mayan civilization, which existed from 2500 before the Common Era to the Common Era 900. Take a look at the map to the right. You can see that the Mayans occupied the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, also down into uh, Guatemala, Belize, and even into Honduras and El Salvador, stretching from the Gulf Coast of Mexico to the North Pacific Ocean. The Mayan civilization has been divided by archaeologists into three major periods, the pre-classic origins beginning at 2500 before the Common Era, the classic Mayan civilization from 200 to 900, during which the southern lowlands were important, and then post-classic from 900 to 1517, when the southern lowlands um, were no longer important and uh, more northern areas were used more. Civilization was not uniform, and instead we see a mosaic of political units. In fact, we see a pattern of the rise of regional kingships that would then collapse. It appears that each new city-state expanded its territory through diplomacy, political marriage, and military conquest. It would reach its maximum territorial limits early on and then collapse as provinces broke away and became independent polities, and sometimes as these breakaways worked together to take over the original, original king, kingship. But there are elements common to all Mayan polities, and these are the calendar, the hieroglyphic script, and the ritualistic ball game. So the Mayan civilization of these kind of different city-states were unified more by religion than by politics or economics. The Mayan calendar is very complex with unfolding cyclic time that is kept track by these complex interlocking calendars. So each row here is a different interlocking calendar, as it were. The complex geography of sacred time helped determine political strategies and social moves. So they kept track of time using three simultaneous calendars. The long count, which gives the year, the hob, 
which was the civil calendar of days, the Hob had a 365 day solar calendar broken into 18 months, shown here, of 20 days each and one month of five days. The Tzolkin was the divine calendar of days and it was using a 260 day calendar with 20 periods shown here of 13 days and each day is numbered 1 to 13. Looking back at the long count, which was an astronomical calendar, it was used to track longer periods of time, what the Maya called the universal cycle. Each set, such cycle is calculated to be 2,880,000 days, or about 7,885 solar years. The Mayans believed that the universe is destroyed and then recreated at the start of each universal cycle. So this shows you these three different calendars and how they intersect, at least uh, for the hob here. So showing you the hob on the right. And here is showing you the numbering system which I'm guessing you figured out pretty quickly. So the bars represent five and the dots represent one. Mayan writing has been partially deciphered and it appears to be both phonetic and syllabic, like Egyptian hieroglyphics. Its use was confined to the elite and rulers and they used scribes to write this so the common everyday person could not write the conquering Spanish destroyed the Mayan documents, such as their codices that had been written on bark and deerskin. Only four codices survive, and here's a section of one of them. What is left mostly are inscriptions on pots, on buildings, and stelae. This is part of the Dresden Codex, which appears to have been drawn by at least eight different scribes sometime between 1000 and 1200 Common Era during the post-classic Mayan period. And it deals primarily with astronomy, so the days, calendars, what are good days for rituals, planting, prophecies, and so on. And also a part of it is on sickness and medicine. So if you look at the center panel, you'll see a whole long list of numbers. Mayan writing is read from top to bottom in double columns. They used hundreds of unique glyphs. So each block in this stele that you see here, or glyph block, contains one to five glyphs, making a word or phrase. So you would read one A first, then one B. Then you would read two A, then two B, then three A, then three B, and so on. Here are some examples of writing using syllables. So you can see that the glyphs come together to make um, a word based on the syllables that are put together. So Cha'ak, the rain god. And here are some examples of logograms, that is, basic words. The Mayan had a hierarchical social system in which kinship or genealogy was important and they were patrilineal, tracing the lineage through the males. The king was considered to be the main intermediary with the other world. He held a divine covenant with the gods and ancestors and symbolically would be depicted as the world tree. The buildings such as pyramids and temples commemorated major events in the life of the king and thus the political history of the kingdom. Families and clans were ranked by their distance from the central royal descent line. Ball courts were the location of ceremonial contest or ritual combat. You see the Chichen Itza ball court reconstructed here on the left. Players acted out the deeds of the Mayan gods. And you notice they're playing with a rubber ball trying to get it through that small, tiny stone opening in the stone loop high up on the wall. Losing team often became sacrificial victims. They were decapitated. 
By the classic Maya period, they were building elaborate water management systems, such as part of the one that you see here at Tikal. Former quarries that had been used for uh, digging up limestone to build pyramids became catchment basins, and they built gravity canals to funnel water into tanks in irrigation systems. So they used irrigation, they raised fish, and they raised garden beds, that is, uh, raised them up higher in elevation. They drained swamps and they terraced steep hillsides. Up to Common Era 434, we had no regional capitals. Each region had its own monument style. But by 514 to 534, we can see four regional capitals with standardized symbolic system used at all of monuments. These capitals were Tikal, Palenque, Kalakmol, and Copan. Around 750 to 810, in the southern lowlands, the Mayan civilization collapsed, and much of the southern lowlands were abandoned. This appears to have been due to warfare, overpopulation, disease, environmental degradation, and severe and long-term drought. In northern Guatemala, the regional capital was Tikal, which was powerful during the Classic period from Common Era 200 to 900. Over 40,000 people lived in and around an urban core with suburbs covering over 25 square miles. Here, a lineage of at least 33 rulers can be traced. And over 100 buildings, many of them were monumental structures, that is pyramids, royal burial vaults, and a great plaza. In Copan, Honduras, a Mayan leader arrived in Common Era 427 to found a dynasty of 16 successive rulers. The city peaked during the classical period from 435 to 800. It covered three acres and ruled over 10,000 people. There was an elaborate complex of raised enclosed courtyards, pyramids, temples, and plazas. Chichen Itza in northeastern Yucatan rose to power during the post-classic period from 900 into the 1200s. This was after the major centers in the southern lowlands such as Tikal ended. Here we find a central plaza with a 75 foot tall stepped pyramid with the temple on top, such as you see here at the right. This particular temple is famous for the serpent effect seen at the equinox. During the equinox, the shadows wave up and down that side of the pyramid, making it look as though the snake is moving from top to bottom. There was a road to a nearby sacred cenote and a ball court 272 feet long. Let's move on to the Teotihuacan civilization in the Highland Valley of Mexico, adjacent to current day Mexico City. From 200 before the Common Era to Common Era 750. Looking back, by 600 before the Common Era, there were a number of chiefdoms in the Valley of Mexico. And by 100 before the Common Era, two of them were competing, Cuicuilco in the west and Teotihuacan in the east. But a volcanic eruption buried the former leaving Teotihuacan to become the center of the Teotihuacan civilization. By Common Era 100, there were at least 80,000 people living here. And by 750, over 150,000 people when the city came to an end. When the Aztec arrived, several hundred years later, they found the ruin of the city Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan, the city, has been well studied archaeologically, and you can visit it. The city was constructed over 800 years by a long-term master plan. It appears to have been a symbolic landscape that replicated the spiritual world. It was laid out in a grid pattern with a three-mile road down the center, here marked in yellow. 
It included 600 pyramids, 500 workshop areas, a great marketplace, 2,000 apartment complexes, and plazas. The building of temples was accompanied by human sacrifices. They had standardized housing here in Teotihuacan. Walled residential compounds were up to 200 feet on a side and housed 200 to 100 related people. These residential compounds were connected by narrow alleys and arranged in neighborhoods or barrios. Some were for craft specialists, like obsidian workers, you can see one such area labeled in the top center of the map, potters, and I notice here two different uh, barrios for incense burner workshops. They also built military quarters and special areas set aside for foreign visitors. They even rerouted the river here, the San Juan River, so that it would conform to their idea of this ritualized landscape. Inside a number of the structures, wall murals have been preserved. Let's end by mentioning the Aztec civilization, which moved into the Valley of Mexico and found the ruins of Teotihuacan. Aztec civilization stretched from 1200 to 1521 when the Spanish entered. All of life was symbolic and governed by rituals. The Aztec held a cyclical view of time and famously, human sacrifice was prevalent. The Spanish landed on the coast in the year that the return of a god was predicted. Cortes marched on Tenochtitlan and reinforced by other Mexicans, conquered the Aztecs. So Mesoamerican civilizations developed out of complex village societies and chiefdoms. It had a hierarchical social system, which of course the chieftains also had had, and rulership was linked to divinity. Rituals and religion were important throughout the Mesoamerican civilizations. Trade was also important, and the ritual ball game was very important. Alliances were constantly changing. <laughs>